first of all, how how are you doing right now? How's everything? Yeah, it's all good. You know, obviously, I'm in a I'm. It's been a great year for me with my music. Um, my recent track, Head and Heart, is you know it was number one in the UK for six weeks over the summer, which is an absolute dream come true. So, yeah, Congratulations. It's, it's, it's been the most amazing year for me. And and but obviously, you know, it's been a weird year as well because of everything that's happened. All my sort of touring and live side of my work has been cancelled or postponed and mm -hmm. you know I, I haven't had a break from dj i mean i've been djing my whole life and i have not had a break from touring in probably eight years so wow. I, miss it. I miss it dearly man i really like it's my favorite thing to do in life is to perform in front of a crowd and play my music so i hope fingers crossed it comes back next year i hope so, I hope so too because i am tired of being in this house with nothing to do <laughs> oh mate i know but you know what? When it does come back, it's going to be the best parties ever because I think everyone's going to be just raring to go and just want to get out there. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, what's funny is how I have conversations with people all the time like, oh, will it come back? Will people go out and have fun? And I'm like, people want to go out and have fun right now. So just imagine when things do open up, when concerts do happen again, people are going to be all for it. You know what I mean? It's going to be mad. Like, everyone's going to be going double hard, man. <laughs> so when this first happened, right, like, what were you doing to, like, pass time well when it first happened i was actually on tour with Jax jones and and um like basically the rest of his tour got cancelled and mm -hmm. when i first got home from it i'd been on the road for like a couple of months already so i thought you know what this would be a nice little break maybe um i was thinking that you know this is only last a month or so i was thinking oh, i'll be back for the summer mm -hmm. um so at this at the first part of it it was kind of nice just to have a little moment just to get myself together and and you know recover and um you know spend some time with my friends and family more and i was doing my sort of djing on my live streams from home which at the beginning was kind of fun because it was like back djing in my bedroom again when i was 14 just djing mm -hmm, to myself mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and i think the reality started to set in that this is not going to be anything short term it was going to be a much like longer term problem and then it then it kind of became a, like started to feel really sad about it and you know um had to adapt to this kind of like new life of just uh, being back at home in London, not being able to travel and all these sorts of things. But listen, man, um, I've got to stay positive because during the lockdown, I was able to get back into the studio more, work through all my music. I got Head and Heart finished during lockdown, mm -hmm. which obviously became a big success for me. So yeah, in, in hindsight, it's been good, but obviously I can't wait for the tour to come back again. Absolutely. Well, I was reading that you almost didn't release Head and Heart, right? Well, yeah, because... I as I said, I, I didn't know how long this whole like, like no, because for me, like playing my records in clubs is, is, is what I do. It's what I've done my whole life. So mm -hmm. I suddenly think that I was going to release a song that wouldn't be able to get played in a club. I was thinking, oh, no, let's just wait till the clubs open again. Because I, as I said, I thought it wouldn't be that long. So I thought maybe delay it a few months and it'll be OK. But then, you know, as I said, reality kind of set in and I kind of realized that this is not not going to go away quickly at all. And it got to the start of summer and I had the record finished and I just, I just, you know, everything in my body was telling me that, you know, let's get this out. Um, you know, the world still needs music and this, this feels like a really positive song that maybe can bring some positive vibes to people during this time. And that's kind of what's happened. And I'm seeing it connecting now all over the world and getting messages where people are just saying, you know, thanks for getting this track out. It's, you know, brightening up my day. It's making me feel good. And that's the most rewarding thing for me. And when I do eventually get to play it in a club to a crowd, it's going to be like the most special moment. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, you know, I just, I just started getting into like fitness and running and stuff like that. And I feel like that song is one of the songs that I like to listen to while I'm like running, you know what I mean? Like it gets you pumped oh, up. Awesome. Like it gets you excited. Oh, that's no, that's awesome to hear that. And I do get a lot of messages that people have this on their gym playlist and yeah, I mean, that's great if it, if it can help motivate people with their workouts and get them to push that extra last rep or, you know, get an extra, you know, bit of running in. That's that's fantastic, man. It's almost like both of your worlds colliding. Yeah, you know, I'm a, I'm a big fitness freak myself, man. So, so um, yeah, I mean, I'm, you know, I've been doing fitness my whole life and mm -hmm. um, I know I train to music every day. I know how important it is for, for me to get that extra bit of motivation. So if my music is helping other people sort of push that extra bit harder, then yeah, I'm buzzing about that. <laughs> are you are you the type of person to work out to your own music? No, no, I don't. <laughs> Listen, man, 
I can't because <laughs> I spend all day working on it in the studio. Like when I get to the gym, that's when I need to switch off. And you know what? I actually like listening to other people's music in the gym because it's kind of a nice way for me to kind of hear what else is going on. And I think when you're in the gym, you kind of zone out a little bit. So it's actually right. a really good place to listen to music to get a good perspective on it. Are you one of those people that cannot listen to your music? Like, let's say if you had, you heard your song on a radio, are you just like, turn it off, turn it off, turn it off? Are you that person? I, I turn it off. <laughs> <laughs> when, I, when I hear it in the Uber, I'm like, yo, Uber driver, this is me. <laughs> <laughs> You're one of those people. Okay. <laughs> well, listen, you got to be proud of it. I'm straight on Instagram story, man, in the Uber. Like, yo, <laughs> it's my jam. <laughs> I love that. That's so cool yeah like literally like when you hear your music on radio man it's the best feeling ever because look you know there was a there was a time in my life where where you know radio wasn't playing my music and and when you first get those radio plays you know when you're a producer and you're releasing music it's it's the best feeling in the world and you know I'm a radio DJ myself now and mm -hmm. I know mm -hmm. that when I play other people's music on the radio they get that same buzz that I still get when I hear my tracks on radio. It's, a, it's an amazing feeling. It's what it's what you work hard for, man. It's just this is what it's all about. <laughs> That's so amazing. Are you so since being in the business, you know, for for as long as you've been doing it, right? What's yeah. the one thing that still excites you? Oh god. Well, there's still quite a few things that excite me, but um, you know, definitely hearing my music on the radio still excites me as much as it did in the first place because it's mm -hmm. still an amazing mm -hmm. feeling and I think, though, although I haven't been able to experience it much uh, this year, but when you play your own records in front of a crowd and you watch the reaction and you, and you see people singing every single word back to you, I mean, honestly, man, it is the best feeling in the world. Does it trip you out? It's, it's just like, it's, it's just like it makes you feel electric. Do you know what mm -hmm. I mean? I, when you're watching people like this, this music that you've worked hard on and you know you've spent months agonizing over and you get it out there and then you you in real life see people having a moment where they've connected with it and and you're there and you're there together they're so excited to see you and you play your record it honestly mate it's just amazing what is the one thing that gives you anxiety when it comes to like putting out music when you're about to dj when you're out there about to perform like what's that one thing that's just like <sighs> that you have to get over it. like you have to you know what i'm saying like the one thing that just like gives you anxiety oh anxiety well well you know what i think as far as djing goes i, I don't actually get nervous or anxious i just get very excited uh, i think mm -hmm. it's because i've done it my whole life i've been djing um, since i was a teenager so over 10 years now and um i think just because of so many years of experience that sort of nervousness or anxiety doesn't exist with me with the DJ inside of things because I've just been doing it for so long and I guess I'm confident in what I do and I'm always well prepared and, and stuff. But for sure, releasing records is very anxious because there's a lot riding on it, man. When you bring a new record out, you know, you want people to love it. It's, it's something that you've worked for months and months on. It's like, it's almost like, you know, you're having a baby and you're putting it out to the world and you're like, oh, please like it, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> right and you don't um, want nobody to call your baby ugly yeah honestly that's, <laughs> i don't have any kids but these records are like my kids <laughs> right exactly and if somebody called your baby ugly you'd be ready to fight <laughs> yeah man i mean honestly like I've, I've i've had sleepless nights before releasing records just just going over in my head if i definitely feel like you know it's ready or you know, you start to second guess yourself and maybe, maybe hear an opinion from somebody that you've shown it to and it's not quite what you want to hear. And then you start thinking, oh God, like, are they right? Are they wrong? So yeah, um, maybe though, as, as the years go on, I'll probably, I might get more confident with, with my music releases. But right now I just feel like going into every release, I'm like, oh, like, you know, bite my nails thinking, right, oh, right. Is this, is this right? Is it wrong? Am I doing the right thing? <laughs> But what if it's an opinion that you don't want to hear? Do you take it with a grain of salt or do you like, like, let's say it's somebody that you totally respect, right? And yeah. they're like, man, I don't know if this is it. Do you go back and tweak the song or do you just put it out as yeah. is? Honestly, it's happened because I, because I definitely ask a lot of people around me what they think of records because I want feedback. And especially people that know about music a lot, I'll go to them 
Mm -hmm. And um, I will always take that feedback and think about it. And I will always go back into the project and, you know, try different things based on feedback that I've got. But all, you always have to remember, right, that music is, is very subjective. Um, not everybody is going to like it. And every, everybody has got different opinions. And, and it's my job to take these opinions on board, you know, get, get what I can out of them. Right. But when it comes down to it, it's on me and my gut instinct of what is, you know, the final piece when it's ready. That's down to me to make that final decision and be confident in it. And, and you know, the, the last few records have gone really well for me. So I feel like I'm growing confidence in, in my decision making in that sense. But yeah, for sure, I'm always, you know, taking up people's feedback on board. You know what's interesting? The fact that you were DJing since you were a teenager. Cause I like, I, I, I like toy with the fact like, oh man, I think DJing would be cool. But whenever yeah. I try it, you ever put shoes in a dryer? Um, well, like to clean my trainers. Yeah. So you ever put shoes in a dryer? That's what it sounds like whenever I try to DJ. So I'm <laughs> like, <laughs> so so first of all, I think That's it's so dope. Sound, that you... <laughs> I know, exact. So say, see, I'm not made out for it. So like, at what, how did you get introduced to music? What's your first musical what? influence? Yeah, you know what? Um, I got my first pair of decks for Christmas when I was 13. You know, I, I only got them, right? Because my older brother was a DJ and he was like a few years older than me. And I just literally thought, oh, I want to be cool like him. <laughs> and I wanted the other kids at school to think, oh, Joel's a DJ. You know, I just thought like that would be such a cool thing. And you right, know, my right. used to record these like mixtapes in his bedroom with all his friends around and a few of them were like MCs. Uh -huh. And I used to, you know, sit in the corner and just think I was like, you know, I was the boy. <laughs> so, um, you know, and I just wanted to jump on and have a little mix and, and that's how I got into it. And I, I just, you know, once I got my decks, it just become my hobby. And, you know, I, I would, you know, be at school and listening to my tapes that I'd recorded in my bedroom on the way to school. And I'd just mm -hmm. be excited to get back and, you know, have a little jam out. And on the weekend, I used to go to the record shop with one of my mates at the time. Because back in the day, right, the only way you could buy music would be like on CD or vinyl. But my decks were turntables, so I had to buy vinyl. You know, there was mm -hmm. no sort of internet with, with MP3 downloads. So, right. I'd have to go to the record shop with my pocket money like every single week and be able to buy one vinyl because they were like eight, 10 quid in England. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So um, I could only afford one song every week, basically. And, you know, going through that process of building up a music collection during my teen teenage years, it, it was all part of the scene and the era. And I just loved it. I, lo I loved the whole, you know, the whole scene of it. That's amazing. You know, do you ever listen back to some of your older tapes and you're like, wow, <laughs> this is this is actually pretty tight. Yeah, I mean, well, you know, there were some interesting ones when I maybe got on the mic and spit a few bars. <laughs> oh, 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 we didn't know that about you. Yeah, hopefully they won't resurface anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I love that, how just like how cool and chill you are, man. I feel like I can sit here and talk to you for hours. Yeah, cool, man. Hopefully we'll be able to meet you in person, you know, when I get to come over to America next year, that'd be so cool. But yeah, it's great to chat to you here, but virtually for now. <laughs> Absolutely. So before you go, let us know what else is next. Um, so what's next? So yeah, at the moment, um, you know, I'm doing some remixes for some amazing artists. I've just remixed uh, Sam Smith's uh, new single. Also, I did a remix recently for Katy Perry. Mm -hmm. um, I've done a remix for Jack Jones coming out soon. So yeah, remixing is a big thing for me and it's something that I love doing. Um, so doing some amazing remixes right now and, you know, obviously working really hard on my own original music as well. At the moment, um, it's amazing to watch Head and Heart sort of growing around the world. So, you know, just sitting back right now and, watch, and watching Head and Heart do its thing. And when the time's right, I'll come with, with my next single um, probably next year. So, yeah, exciting times ahead, man. Joe, please win the next single comes out we have to talk about it because i i just I, I would love to talk to you again <laughs> 100%, we're doing that 100 percent. appreciate you jumping on and chatting with us i i can't thank you enough no thanks man it was great to meet you and like i said man hopefully next year we're to do it in person